హలో ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఐఎమ్ ప్రసన్న రామస్వామి ఐ హెల్ ఫ్రమ్ తేనీ డిస్ట్రిక్ట్ ఇన్ తమిళనాడు అండ్ ఐ క్లియర్ టూ థౌసండ్ నైన్ సివిల్ సర్వీస్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్ విత్ అన్ ఆల్ ఇండియా ర్యాంక్ ఆఫ్ వన్ ఎయిటీ టూ అండ్ దిస్ వాస్ మై ఫస్ట్ అటెంప్ట్ అండ్ నాట్ జస్ట్ మీ ఈవెన్ ద ఫస్ట్ ర్యాంకర్ ఫైసల్ షా అండ్ ది థర్డ్ ర్యాంకర్ దిస్ ఇస్ యువా సహాయ్ అండ్ దే వర్ ఆల్ ఫస్ట్ ర్యాంకర్స్ ద పాయింట్ ఐఎమ్ ట్రైంగ్ టు డ్రైవ్ హియర్ ఇస్ దాట్ ఇట్స్ వెరీ మచ్ పాసిబుల్ టు క్లియర్ దిస్ ఎగ్జామ్ విత్ ఫ్లయింగ్ కలర్స్ ఇన్ ది వెరీ ఫస్ట్ అటెంప్ట్ అండ్ ఐ ఆమ్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఐఎమ్ హియర్ టు టెల్ యూ హౌ టు గో అబౌట్ ఇట్ సో దాట్ all of you clear it in the very first attempt see to begin with first of all i'd like to thank uh, jvin.com and manidhiniam trust for giving me this golden opportunity to share my experience with you because i remember when i was a student we uh, i used to search the net for all uh, such videos i mean uh, those who have played this exam to get some information all right before we begin first of all you should uh, ask your, uh, yourself this question why do i want to become a civil servant this is perhaps the most important question because believe me in the course of your preparation there will be times when you will feel that uh, you will feel a bit frustrated you will ask uh, this question will probably in your mind why do i have to prepare for civil service why do i need to put in such long hours of study for example 10 to 12 hours consistently all right so in order to keep yourself constantly motivated this question should be uh, this question should be answered properly you should have a proper answer to this question why i need to become a civil servant because this will be the driving force this will keep motivating you all right so be very clear Uh, for example you should want to become a civil servant for any reason but it should be firm you should believe in that for example to serve the people or, or for example even if it's power and money okay but it should be a true motivator all right then coming on to uh, prelims i'll start with prelims prelims uh, if uh, if i'm not, if i'm not wrong next year the pattern is going to change you will not have optional papers in, um, starting from 2011 so it will be more of uh, the general studies paper 1 will be the same and the next uh, second paper paper 2 will be civil service aptitude test and i think it's too premature for me to be talking about that because we'll know the exact pattern only later this year for example it is right now it's 2010 uh, july so it is it's too premature for me to be talking about that you will get to know that on uh, by december this year uh, general studies the most important source i believe are the newspapers newspapers hindu times of india they are the standard sources newspaper it's a sin in fact when you are preparing for civil service to skip a day's newspaper you can even skip your uh what do you say brushing and bathing and all but you should never skip the newspapers this is something which i am very particular about i never skipped a day's newspaper in two years in the course of preparation starting from 2008 till now i am making it a point to read every day's newspaper all right then you have to go for magazines uh, frontline for example frontline is a very good magazine and uh, you should make it a point to cover that uh, magazine as far as possible then apart from that you should go for some of the magazines like civil service times in any one particular magazine because there are many magazines in the mar- in, in the market civil service chronicle uh, civil service times wizard and all that you should you can choose any one of it but only one of it because you will see that you will not be able to finish uh, even one magazine completely so don't get disheartened this happens with everyone but the main thing is that you should keep reading you should keep reading and organize what you read that is perhaps most important because the day before the examination you should be able to recollect and revise all right that's all it goes about prelims fine then coming on to mains start uh, talking about mains first of all i would like to tell you how to choose an optional because mains is perhaps the most important part of the examination because only the, uh, the marks that you score in mains combined with your interview score gives you the rank all right so mains the most important part is choosing the right optional believe me you should not choose an optional or just because someone told you that it's is is scoring i'll tell you the right way of choosing an optional is Uh, first of all you have a whole list of op- optionals zero in on two or three optionals then buy some books basic books on those optionals go about it go about reading those with the syllabus in your hand the syllabus should be a guiding light always you should have a syllabus in your hand all right after that after you do that once you are done with the books uh, you must ask yourself this question are you satisfied the most important criteria is that even if you don't like an optional you should not hate it it is not important that you love the optional but at least you should not hate it how do you uh, determine that once you have gone with once you are through with the books uh, sit down with uh, previous year's question papers upsc question papers that is available in the market and then assess yourself okay am i comfortable with this option that is how you choose an option this is the right way of choosing an option i am stressing this because civil service uh, is like a game you have rules and regulations and only those who play by the rules clear the exam and more so uh, for example many people ask me why did uh, how could i clear the exam in the first place uh, in the first attempt whereas there are many others much more brilliant than me who are still struggling very simple fact it's not that i am any more intelligent or hard working than any of them the only point is that i played by the rules and this is the point that i want to drive home 
after that, after you have uh, chosen your optionals, the next most important thing perhaps is coaching centers. First of all, are coaching centers important? If you ask me this question, I would say yes, but only to an extent. I personally believe that coaching centers only make your job easier. They will not do the job for you. For example, I did my coaching. Uh, for example, my first option, public administration, I did from Vajiram and also general studies in New Delhi. And the second optional, geography, I did from uh, directions, uh, owned by Mrs. Neetu Singh. In fact, I owe them a lot because uh, they have played a great role. Then after uh, taking my mains, I came to Chennai and I was given excellent coaching by Manidhanayam Institute. Manidhanayam, it's run by Manidhanayam Charitable Trust. And uh, in fact, they gave me free coaching. And the results are quite evident because I scored very good scores in the interview. So the point is that coaching centers are helpful, yes. But you have to be very careful. Coaching centers will perhaps do only 20 to 30 percent of your job. But the rest, 80 to 70 percent, will be your job. They will make only things easier for you. So that the next time you go with the books, it's easy for you. It's not, it doesn't bounce over your head. That's the point. Okay, after uh, talking about optionals, main examination, you have to uh, always keep in mind that once the prelims is over, the prelims are over, you should make sure that you sit with the books within the next 10 days. Many of the students do a, a colossal blunder by taking an extended leave of one or two months. Believe me, it's a sure recipe for suicide. You should start within the next 10 days with the books and read my words, start writing answers from the day one. Because main examination is different from prelims in the sense you have to analyze more. It's not just facts, it's not just points that you give. The analysis, the, the view that you take, that is more important and that comes by practice. The more you practice, the better. In, in fact, if you ask if there is any single success mantra, I don't believe there are any easy or shortcuts, but if there is one, I believe this is it. Write, start writing answers from day one. In fact, every day, once you start preparing, every day you should make a point that you write at least three answers every day. One on paper one, one on paper two, and the next one on general studies. You simply do that and get it assessed and corrected by uh, maybe your peers or your teachers. You just do that, you'll, you'll see the difference. There will be a mild difference between you and the other students, those who are not in the habit of writing. Because believe me, that my experience tells me that most of the students, they emphasize more on reading and, 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 and very much less on writing answer. That's exactly the opposite of what you should be doing. Because reading is common. Most of us, I mean, most of the aspirants have access to the same books. Most of them, uh, fact-wise, information-wise, are at the same pedestal. But the difference lies in the way you practice answers, uh, writing answers. So keep this in mind. So once we are done with that, I think mains, uh, that's more, more or less uh, enough. Also in mains, general studies, I believe newspapers are again the most important source. For example, some topics like Indian economy, I believe that you should first of all, the first most important source should be newspapers for Indian economy and uh, say current affairs and all. Again, the same magazine, Frontline, Civil Service Times. Uh, once you are done with mains, then we go to the next stage, interview. Interview, actually, if you see uh, in the notification, it will not be termed interview. It is called personality test. All right? Many of the students, they make a mistake by, uh, by considering interview to be a question and answer session. No, it is not that. They test your interview. It's an interaction. It's a two-way process. All right? So you should not be in a mistaken notion that interview, you just write up some facts regarding your, your personal data and your optional subjects, and you can see yourself through. No. The qualities that are expected of a civil servant will be searched in you in the interview process. What are those? Honesty, honesty, integrity, confidence, boldness, communication skills. All this will be tested. All this will be given most priority. They will be the most prioritized aspects that will be searched for in a candidate in the personality test. And for this, uh, this leads me to another point. This proves that you cannot start preparing for interview the day or a week or a month before the interview. It should be a continuous process. The day you start preparing for civil services, you should start molding yourself. Because a man's personality cannot be changed in 10 days or uh, say even uh, a month. It has to be molded constantly. It's a part of you. All right? So, so start talking boldly. Start having command over the language. Because invariably, good language will get you good marks. Believe it. So English, either English or a regional language, anything you should have a firm mastery over the language. Believe me, across all the boards, honesty is very much appreciated. Don't think that you can fool them and get away with that. So all this, you just do this, you play by the rules. These are simply, very simply, these are all the rules, which I followed, and the results are here for you to see. I could clear this exam in the very first attempt, and I hope that all of you do so in the future.